Welcome to On Our Terms, a show which explores alternate ways of living. For today's show, we will explore the concept of dumpster diving, but also social media fame and why these people choose these lifestyles. So our first segment will look into the war on waste and how different communities around the Illawarra utilises their resources to tackle this issue. Let's get into it. For those living below the poverty line, food can be scarce, leading them to access it in alternative ways. But for some people, they choose to forego that grocery line and source their food through dumpster diving. Despite the legality surrounding this, it doesn't stop a small group here in the Illawarra from going out at night and getting food for free. No, it's just the three of us. Oh yeah, get in. Yes. <laughs> Couldn't hear you. Get sorry. ready for a lot of aqua and spice girls. To hit up the hot spots, we found some locals willing to take us dumpster diving through areas we'd otherwise pass. Definitely a cheeky wash. <laughs> when did I start dumpster diving? Um, I was involved, I had friends in that community, I guess, um, who I've always known, and I dabbled, I guess, a little bit back in 2015. Um, but this year was probably when I really started going, you know, a fair bit. People usually ask why. Um, why do you do it? And... I don't know, I have four jobs right now. I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm living in my van and I go dumpster diving, but it's not because I need to. I'm, yeah, definitely don't need to, but it's because I want to and because I like it. I mean, there's a big difference between those people that, yeah, go out in dark clothing at whatever time of the night and go dumpster diving compared to those people that, on the other end of the spectrum, who can just, yeah, reduce their own waste in their own household and make sure less food gets into the, um, into the bins and things like that and can petition to politicians and governments and big franchises like Coles and Woolies or whatever to stop, to, you know, reduce more waste. A lot of suppliers and things like that will actually chuck out perfectly good food just because it's not the right size or it's not the right dimension, it's too big or it's too small or it's a little bit odd. It's still perfectly good food, um, it's fantastic to eat, really tasty, but because it doesn't fit into supermarket standards or whatever, they need to chuck it out. Most of the time, still in packages, still in packages, and they have an expiry date on it or they've, you know, used by date, so the supermarket has to chuck it out. But that's just a date that's been set by the um, supplier or whatever, you know. It's still good to eat, and a lot, so a lot of the time, all this food's in packaging, things like that. You know, people think that you're diving into a bin and you're pulling out like half-eaten apples and rotten tomatoes and crap like that, but it's far from that. So, you know, every single supermarket, every single bakery and things like that throws out food all the time, which is usually like shopping bags and shopping bags full of food, right? Um, and it's all great quality. You know, I can, I'll literally see them packing it into the big, you know, double, um, double packed plastic bags, like bin bags. They'll be shoving it in there. They'll, you know, wheel it out on shopping trolleys, go around to the back, literally place it on the top of the bin um, and it's still warm by the time we get to it a lot of the time and it's amazing quality and I even could have spent five bucks you know buying it before or wait half an hour and get 40 of them for free it's really, really exciting when you come across like good food because you just especially things you don't know about because you just become more experimental and then if you really like it then I'll chance I'll go out and buy it next time I'm shopping People think it's really gross, it's unhygienic, blah, 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 all these things, far from the truth. Um, 
people think that we're wearing like dark hoodies and things like that and we're sneaking in at night time with torches and stuff like that. Far from the truth. It's more of walking out the back once all everything's closed, having a gaze, see if there's any food in there. Like I never go actually into the b and just like have a gaze over the, over the ledge, check it out if there's anything, move around a few things, nothing, okay, like move on. It's the classic media landscape of it and the way it's portrayed in the media and things like that, which is just completely inaccurate and it's very far from the truth. Despite the common assumption that those who dumpster dive can't afford food, for some it's a combination of saving money and also the environment. Australia is one of the most wasteful countries in the developed world, with the waste we generate growing at twice the rate of the population. This means we produce enough food to feed up to 60 million people, yet 2 million Australians are left without access to safe and nutritious food. Each year, the average Australian family throws out over $3,500 worth of food, with food waste accounting for a third of household waste. That's a fifth of the food you buy thrown away. 8.2 million tonnes of food waste is generated yearly, and the majority of that ends up in our landfill, with 1.5 million of that belonging to the commercial and industrial sector across the nation. The greenhouse gases produced by this each year is equivalent to the emissions of Australia's steel and iron ore industry combined. Whether dumpster diving is illegal or not is a grey area, with no specific act in place, but it's other laws which dumpster divers risk breaking. So long as it's in public domains and you don't trespass, break and enter private property, then you're safe. But those who throw out the most food, notably chain stores, lock up their bins and sector off their properties with warning signs. However, a business may not have a claim on items once it's placed in the bin. If an item can be reasonably considered abandoned, then taking it is not considered theft. For those who want to forego the risk, the Illawarra Food Hub provides a different initiative to saving food waste and making food affordable. Yeah, national partners like Woolworths and Coles, they've been absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we picked up from 10 Woolworths stores here and 10 uh, coal stores locally, uh, five days a week. And that's fruit and vegetables and bread items. And what we do with those is we distribute that out to our clients free of charge. We wear the cost of that. The combined councils is, is part of, of uh, the initiative here as well. And we've got a great working relationship with the, the mayors. This is all incorporated into the big picture. We used to be the Hope Centre Food Bar, now it's the Hope Centre Illawarra Food Hub. And uh, through that, we, we are, we're trying to uh, build a, a bigger community responsibility and relationship with councils so they understand that, that we are, we're saving a lot of money and we've done a social return on investment report for every dollar that, that uh, we save here in, in uh, recycled food is, is seven dollars back to the government so it's huge so it's millions of dollars that we put back into the government in savings well, i suppose we don't just gauge what we're doing here we've probably only got less than three percent of food waste this food which would normally have gone into landfill is now being recycled back into the community so if, say for instance we might get bruised stock from a uh, Woolworths or coals or uh, fruit that's that's uh, doesn't look all that uh, inviting because it's not perfect, but there might be a bruise section on it and, and you can basically just cut that off and, and still consumable. And uh, some, of the, some of the stuff we're getting is actually very, very good quality and uh, people really appreciate that. What are these? A lot of people don't understand the difference between use by, okay, at, um, best before. Best before date, you can have coffee, sealed coffee that's got another two years good life in it. And what we do is we'll get low-coated food, okay, or it's come, come to us, not, not it's used by, because all used by has to go in the bin. But best before, it means it's still consumable, and but it's probably gone past its premium quality time, which is good for us, because we get, we're about to buy in a lot of our food. And because we're not funded, a lot of people don't realise we're buying 80% of the food. We've got to buy that type of product to keep the prices down. And we've we've had a, a bag price out there for $35 for the last six or seven years now. And uh, that's very good value.
So in, in real terms, you walk out here with about $150 worth of food, and, and uh, yeah, you can feed a family with that. We, we um, it just interviewed some people there last week, and, and they were speaking to where some Woolworths managers down, and we had a couple of uh, people out there on the floor, and they, and they said it wasn't for us, they wouldn't be able to survive. You know, they, they've still got bills to pay, they've got family at home, they've got rent, they've got rates to pay, you know, and electricity. And uh, we're an answer to them, which gives them more income to be able to buy other things that they, they need. But there's, yeah, there's so, so many people that we do help, of course, there's literally thousands of them. So, oh, wow, some of the stories. With the same goal of reducing food waste, Jeff believes there's no need for dumpster diving and holds concerns over the security aspects involved. I, 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 think, I, think, it's, I think it's probably... People who are doing it tough used to go to the back of Woolworths and Coles and they used to um, access the food in there and some people have been killed doing it. They've fallen asleep in dumpsters and they're basically, the, the garbo trucks come along and throw them in the, in the waste trucks. Yeah. Perhaps they, they think it's, it's the easy option just to try and dump into, jump into something. Um, I don't know, it's, it doesn't make sense because there's no need for it. With the amount of excess food we see here today, it's hard to believe that there's still so much going into dumpsters. For Keegan, he's seen too much being wasted to not take action. So I work at a, a bistro as well, like it's a bar and bistro, and there's so much food that doesn't get eaten all the time. And I, so before it ended up in the bin, so like people buy like a nachos for instance and have like one bite and then and they leave it there for half an hour and then they pack up and leave or whatever. And it's just like, that's ridiculous. And like, that's a whole nachos and I'm starving. Hell yeah, I'll put it in like a, another packet or whatever and I'll, and I'll save it for later. And so I'll go through the night, I'll salvage heaps of food and take it home. So that, yeah, that's the type of dumpster diving, I guess. Um, and that's the best because I, I last, like the last two weeks, for instance, uh, it's just, I've survived completely off dumpster diving. There's an amazing community around it who are all, really keen to tackle food waste and are actively going out there and you know disseminating the information and trying to get more people involved with it the food is good food like i'm not willing to put my own health at risk or anything like that it's better for the environment for me to eat it than it is for it to end up in in, in our um in our wastes with the nation producing so much food waste that it's enough to fill the Melbourne cricket grounds nearly 15 times, perhaps living our lives alternatively by changing our waste habits will inhibit us from running out of the resources we live off. Back to you guys in the studio. It's interesting to see the different perspectives on waste in our local region. Yeah, definitely. So we sent out our reporters to ask local students what they think about dumpster diving. Hey guys, I'm... Oh. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Josh and today we're at the University of Wollongong asking students what they think about dumpster diving. Um... Uh... Um... Um... um I don't want to know. Is it sort of like where you go looking for things in dumpsters? I'm not sure. A, a, a bad guy doing diving? Is this, is this something to do with some sort of sport or music or something? Or I got no idea. <laughs> just going through garbage. People who oh, just jump in trash cans and stuff. Is that, is that a thing? Jumping into like uh, where the supermarkets chucked out food that they can't use anymore. Taking it for yourself and reusing food that other people would otherwise just waste. Um, a normal cleansed person wouldn't find themselves doing this. Well, when I knew people doing it, it was really a big thing to save money. University students, who wouldn't want free food? Like they've just stooped to the lowest of lows and they want to, they just want food because they can't get it anywhere else. They don't have any food or money and so desperation. Especially if someone is from like a low socioeconomic background. Not just food though, there could be like clothes and stuff as well and just any sort of something to hold maybe, something to own. To look through mail or food, I know a lot of, like you could find information about people, their bills and stuff. I don't know. You know sometimes people may chuck out what they think is garbage and then to another person that could be like still useful 
And otherwise, food wastage has been a bit issues, I reckon, because I used to work in a cafe and they usually throw out more than half of the food that they have in the fridge and they are not allowed to bring it home anyway and they are not giving it to someone who can eat them and it's still actually a, like, edible, so I think it's a very bad problem. To me, I, I hate wasting food. I have eaten dumpster dive food. And if it's packaged, I wouldn't go, like, bother. I'd be like, R.I.P. I was slightly intoxicated at the time. It was a dumpster dive pizza. But, you know, I think from my memory, it wasn't too bad. So we've had a lot of different opinions here today. Some people don't know what it is. Some people do. And some have even tried it while intoxicated. Back to you, host. Thanks, Josh. It's great to get young people's opinions on the matter. So moving on to our second story, we're now going to look into the lives of social media influencers who put their lives onto the internet for the entire world to see. Hey guys, so now we'll be looking into the concept of social media fame and why people choose to share their lives with the world via social media. We've spoken to two people that choose to do this to try and empower people with their everyday life. Let's have a look. 70% of Australia's population are active monthly users on Facebook, with 62% actively using YouTube. So now for the big question. How do influencers make money on social media? Making money on social media sites such as YouTube comes down to one thing, advertising. Yet it's not just a matter of hopping on, uploading a video and watching the money roll in. To become successful on YouTube, you've got to hone your skills, have a passion for content creating and hopefully build an audience. Recent university graduate Veronica Kremen and makeup artist Ozzy Leonardo have successfully grown their social media following through their booming YouTube channels. Veronica started her YouTube channel, Vonnie, seven years ago. It started back in 2010 and I was just kind of bored at home, I think. And I grew up with brothers and a dad and so all guy family. And, you know, I was really into makeup and fashion and beauty. And, you know, I just started looking on the internet, looking on like whatever was on at the time, maybe Tumblr and different things like that. And then I came across this beauty side of YouTube and I saw all these YouTubers in America doing it. And I thought, well, why not? Like, why don't I do it? It started as a hobby in high school, but unexpectedly grew to success. She currently has 15,000 subscribers. Ozzy began working as a makeup artist two years ago. Prior to her YouTube channel, she was underwhelmed with her follower count. She began her YouTube journey just six months ago and is currently sitting at 50,000 subscribers. So I love doing YouTube because I'm in a room by myself and I, I guess in the last year I've sort of learnt a bit about myself because obviously I watch back and I'm like, oh my god, like look how I move, you know, how I apply makeup, um, but I, I really do enjoy it, um, even though like my income at the moment is only 20 cents from YouTube, um, it's not about the money, it's more about teaching other women because I do get a lot of women ask me, you know, do you do one-on-one -on -one classes, but because I'm so busy with doing makeup, I don't have the chance to yeah, sit down and actually teach people, so I thought, why not start YouTube? With social media on the rise, hate comments and trolls are abundant. I do get, oh, um, can you post a photo of the girl without 10 tons of makeup? It would be like a photo of myself. Or, um, I had one last week, but I forgot. It really did affect me. But you sort of just have to block it out because amongst all the negative, there's a lot of positive as well. So I've learned to just block it out and not take it to heart. It would make me really conscious. So, you know, if someone's like, oh, she's wearing too much makeup. Like, even though deep down I know I'm not, I sort of feel like, oh, maybe I am. Yeah, it just makes you sort of notice things that you don't normally notice. In high school, uh, there were these boys that decided to share the videos around on their Facebook page and thought it'd be really funny to pay me out and make fun of me. And that was really hard because I was like, oh, it's okay, I've got all these zero other YouTube friends. Ah, this is so weird. Um, and I think that, yeah, having them make fun of me was such a hard time, but it also made me just want to keep going anyway because I thought, you know, I just kind of looked at them in pity, like, you know, look at what you're doing. You're putting someone down who's a couple grades below you, who doesn't even know you, you know? So I think that was something that really affected me, but was also a really good stepping stone. Although these comments are expected to be seen on social media, the good things outweigh the bad. 
a huge person that I was, you know, pretty much in love with. I loved this girl. She made beauty videos. Her name was Megan Hart's Makeup. And she would do videos all the time about her life and beauty and fashion. I was very inspired by this girl. But she lived over in Texas in the United States. And so for me, I was like, how am I ever going to, you know, get in contact with her or meet her? You know, and I was such a little YouTuber back then. And she had, you know, maybe 500,000 subscribers. Um, and one day I tweeted her and said, you know, oh, like, hi, love your videos, you know, XOXO. <laughs> and she wrote back to me being like, hey girl, I love your Tumblr. I just wanted to let you know, XO. And I was like, ah, <laughs> what? Um, and then two to three days later, she did this video called What I Love About You Tag. And she featured me in it and spoke about me for about a minute. And I cried. I cried for days. I think I had a day off school. I was just so happy. I get a lot of companies that send me free makeup a lot of local businesses um i get my lips done for free now <laughs> it's something i used to always i pay 800 dollars for every time but now the lady is happy to just use my face because obviously um from a business point of view people go to her now because of me i guess social media has assisted in boosting self-confidence and gives a platform for people to help each other my goal is just to show the world who i am basically and inspire other women like my motto is bringing confidence to women so that was what I came up with when I first became a makeup artist because I loved the feeling I gave to women. Beauty um, was definitely something that I saw when I was younger as a popular thing that everyone was doing but I wasn't necessarily I guess passionate about it and it wasn't something that I was you know my everyday makeup routine hasn't changed for like five years <laughs> I don't think I could make enough videos on that um, but I know that you know when I Google something or I look, go in a bookstore, I'm constantly going towards self-development and self-growth and, you know, living your best life. And I know that that's what I want to be able to help people with. And yeah, I think why it's something that I know has always been in me and I love to make people smile and laugh and I love seeing people live their best life. So that's really what I want to bring to my channel. Vlogging brings both Aussie and Veronica joy. I want to upload more videos, not just on makeup, on just day-to-day -day vlogging. I feel like like my last video was with Lisa Trujillo, who's um, a renowned instructor in Illawarra, and I got 20,000 views um, within a day, and I've never hit that. So I have, I think um, I've got like 11 views for like a month, that sort of average. So I feel like people like to see what I'm up to, um, they want to see me interacting. I think now I'm getting into vlogs and I'm also leaning more towards like self-development and self-growth in things that I've experienced. So things like university and helping people, you know, you know, get good grades or how to be organized, just different things on like how to help with life, I think. However, both Ozzy and Veronica exercise caution when it comes to showing their partners in their videos. Uh, I think that because he works in a job that isn't, um, I guess, he works in a corporate job. So for him, he doesn't want to be shown online um, on my YouTube channel, which is completely fair enough, at least while he's in this role. So I think that in that stance, it does affect him because he can't be in those moments on the camera. Um, but in saying that, he knows that it's what I love to do and is what makes me happy and he wants the same thing for me. So he's really stoked about it. Um, he was the one that bought like my ring light and light stand to sort of keep me going and say like you know you can do this you know just keep going for what you love so yeah I think it positively impacts him because it positively impacts me. So I want to do more videos um, even with my partner I'll, I want to involve him more as well because he's one of my best supporters so he's one of the reasons why I started YouTube he was like what are you doing just do it so yeah I want to show him a bit more and and I'm a very secretive person when it comes to my relationship as well. And I feel like once I introduce him to the world, it's like people will start wondering, okay, where is he now? And I feel it's something that I am a bit scared to do, but I feel like I'm, you can't live life being scared. You need to take risks. And yeah, I just want to see what, it, like what will happen if I do. Yeah, I think a lot of girls would be interested to see. Um, well, I am anyway. When I watch YouTubers, I want to know, oh, who is she with? Like, sometimes it reflects who you are as well when you look at the partner. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Back to you guys in the studio. It's so cool to see how social media can benefit these people, whether it's just a hobby or if it's even a form of income.
Yeah. So we sent Liv out to ask the local community about their opinions on social media fame. Let's hear what they have to say. Am I rolling? Yeah. Hi guys, I'm down at the University of Wollongong today interviewing students about their opinions on social media fame. Um, well, there's a lot of people doing it, so if they do get the attention for it, then like good on them. Um, if they use it for good purposes, then I'm, I don't mind, it's good entertainment. Um, but if they're just there doing like stupid videos, then I'm kind of like, okay, why are you getting so much attention and fame for it? So don't really have spend a lot of time on social media, but I suppose if someone can find a way to earn money without doing a great deal of work, good on them. It's absolutely ridiculous. How can these people make a career out of something that is just like essentially doing nothing? I like, is it a real job? I guess it's justified, but also I don't agree with it. Um, well, for me, I look at a lot of the fitness fames, I guess, and that gives me unrealistic expectations. So it, it makes me feel down, but I guess it inspires other people at the same time. Do you have an opinion? She just took my point. <laughs> um, I don't really have an opinion. Like, I think it's kind of overrated and, you know, like, followers don't really say anything and all that sort of stuff. I think that if they're enjoying it and they're not doing anything bad, then I don't really see a problem. I understand that there's people that have tried harder to, you know, earn jobs and stuff, but at the same time, they're bringing entertainment to millions of people. So as long as they're not hurting anyone, I don't see a big problem. I mean, it's fine <laughs> if, if people want what they're doing, then that's cool. Right. There's obviously some, like, crap ones, like you catch me outside, girl. What's her name? How about that know. girl? Anyway, yeah. I don't know, but, like, YouTube and that kind of media is, like, it's the new thing, you know? I don't even use traditional media anymore except for, like, films. So, like, yeah, everyone that's up and coming on there, it's the the way of the future. We've had heaps of different responses down here today. It seems that some people think it's empowering, some people think it's a sellout and others just don't really care. Back to you hosts. Thanks Liv. There's definitely some strong opinions in there but it's an awesome to see differing views on the topic. Definitely. Well that kind of brings us to the end of this week's show but join us next week where we will explore the ideas of living off the grid and sex work. See you then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>